Welcome to our next Pivot Talk interview. Today, I have a pleasure to, call, to host Cass Hergold, uh, the chairman of the board, president, and secretary of Polish Chamber of Commerce in the USA. Hi, Cass. Mm, I'm happy that you found some time to join us here. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, you hold the highest position in the Polish Chamber of Commerce in the USA, and not without the reason. Uh, your business experience is very impressive. My research shows that for 40 years, you were a manager and director at Xerox. And by the way, you have Polish roots. Uh, can you tell us how you ended up in the US and what your professional career was like, uh, which led you to the Polish Chamber of Commerce? Okay, well, it's a long story, uh, to make it short. Uh, my father graduated from the Medical Academy in Poznań in 1939 and entered the Polish Army as a second lieutenant in the uh, medical corps. Uh, was captured by the Germans outside of in the Battle of Warsaw, wound up spending four and a half or nearly five years at Waldenburg, which was the prison that the Wehrmacht established for Polish officers. There were some 5,900 Polish officers. It's near a place called Dabigniew now in Poland, uh, which I visited a few years ago. Uh, but when the Germans opened up the camp, uh, obviously all the people were let go. Uh, somehow, my father and his brother, who was also a doctor, found out that they were on some list to be sent to Moscow for training. They concluded that that was not a good idea, not something they wanted to do. So they somehow managed to escape. My father, had met my mother in Poznań, who my mother was from Poznań, um, uh, in, uh, when he was medical school, and uh, got back to Poznań and gave her two and a half hours to decide whether she would come with him as he fled from Poland. Wound up in Germany with the American army and then transferred to Italy to join General Anders' Polish Corps in Italy, fighting with the Brits. And from there, after the war was over, they were sent to the UK, where my father was a doctor in the Polish resettlement camps. But he was not a great fan of socialized medicine. Uh, England obviously had a difficult uh, time right after the war. And he had some relatives here in the United States. So we came to the United States uh, and he then requalified as a physician. And in fact, in back of me here, there's a print of the old Cunard Queen Elizabeth, which was the ship that we came to the United States on many years ago. Oh. Uh, so that's the story. And then, of course, once I was in the United States, I learned English in uh, grade school uh, and uh, eventually trained as a lawyer. Started out life at a Wall Street law firm in the corporate finance area, but decided that I really didn't want to be an advisor and preferred to actually be a doer. And so it struck me that the place to do that would be in business. I was interested in a career in international business and a multinational corporation was the best place to do that. Uh, Xerox was a complicated international corporation which required some degree of lawyers in the business because Xerox did business internationally through joint ventures. So for example, Europe was run through a joint venture with the rank organization called Rank Xerox. So that's how I wound up at Xerox, and uh, I initially joined in the legal department, but had an opportunity to move on to the business side, which I grabbed. Um, and the rest is uh, a case of interesting opportunities being presented to me, because I never imagined that I would stay anywhere for 40 years. Okay, that, that's really interesting. Um, okay. So when you think of innovation, uh, you probably see Silicon Valley in front of your eyes. Uh, but currently, the Polish Chamber of Commerce in the US is trying to change this uh, connotation and present Poland uh, as a highly innovative place to do business. Um, why this approach? Well, so we have a number of objectives with the Polish Chamber of Commerce. And if you permit me, let me try to outline them. The first uh, is to tell the Polish economic success story. Uh, Poland has had a remarkable track record of economic success since liberation from communism under successive governments. And that growth rate has been remarkably consistent in the 3 to 4% GDP growth range. Again, 
over successive governments, different governors of the Bank of Poland, and so on. And that's a story which is not terribly well understood in the United States. So that's job number one. Uh, and to try to make sure that people understand that Poland is also a modernizing economy, a rapidly modernizing economy. You know, people have this vision of Poland in the United States in too many cases of still a drab gray place, sort of still heavily influenced by the communist era or a nice place to go visit from a tourism perspective, you know, the image of the old town of Warsaw or Bavel Castle or even the kind of image behind you, uh, which of course all is true, great place to go on a vacation. But there is less of an understanding of how rapidly Poland has modernized and how effectively, for example, the EU funds Poland has received over the years have been invested in infrastructure improvements and so forth. Uh, so for example, on our website on the chamber, we try to show images of modern Poland versus the traditional Poland uh, to try to have business people in the United States understand that they're coming to a Western country, not some Eastern European backwater that still is trying to emerge from the communist era. So that's our first objective. Um, and in fact, behind me, I have a book uh, called Europe's Growth Champion. Uh, and in fact, if you look at even if, uh, you know, given the COVID crisis, uh, the OECD, for example, uh, has suggested recently that Poland is likely to have a much faster and better recovery in 2021 from the COVID crisis, with GDP growth in the 4% range than most other countries in, in Europe. Uh, so that's a very good story and it needs to be told. Um, the second objective goes to your question, which is to position Poland as an alternate destination or supply chain uh, for American companies that are looking to diversify or minimize their dependence on China and Asia. Uh, and of course, I think, uh, you know, 65% or so of the Polish economy is services uh, rather than industry. Uh, and PGS plays straight into the services uh, space. Uh, and it's really getting uh, people to understand that there are opportunities to partner or work with or become customers and clients of Polish companies that are highly innovative uh, and that are absolutely plugged in to the latest digital modern economy. Uh, as again, alternate partners uh, that they can work with, stressing the innovation that already exists in Poland, the extraordinary education levels, hard work and motivation of the Polish workforce, uh, and indeed uh, the fact that other large multinational companies like Microsoft, which recently announced a billion dollar R&D investment uh, in Poland, uh, recognize that innovation can thrive in Poland and that Poles have the, the kinds of skills, the kinds of motivation, work ethic uh, that can thrive in a digital innovative economy. So that's job number two of how we're trying to position the, the chamber. Uh, and our third objective is to assist Polish companies that are interested in addressing the US market, developing an American clientele, uh, with entering the US market. Uh, the United States is a huge market. Uh, and sometimes people are tempted to say, okay, because it's such a big market, it'll be easy to do business here. Well, in fact, like everywhere else in the world, um, you have to be very hard headed and very clear as to what your value proposition is and how your offering or product can be differentiated from others or why it can be advantaged. Uh, in the US market. And we can provide some, let me say, gratuitous advice uh, in that respect. Okay, so as you mentioned, uh, in the United States, uh, there is a quite visible trend towards moving business from Asia to America or Europe. Uh, would you recommend Poland and PGS Software as a place to outsource your IT? Yes, absolutely. I mean, I think the, uh, there is already quite a large sector 
in the Polish economy uh, call centers. For example, HP has a call center in Poland. Uh, and there are a number of other international companies that have uh, established that type of operation in Poland. But of course, that to some extent was uh, A, designed to have a different destination than just India for that kind of operation, and also to take advantage of labor arbitrage, frankly. Uh, one of the things I resonate with is the, is the government's, Polish government's view that more of the profit, that Poland shouldn't just be seen as a low-cost labor destination to do things, uh, but that more of the gross margin, if you will, more of the profit should be retained in Poland by Polish companies who are operating internationally and not just simply exporting it and allowing their distributor uh, in the Western world to make most of the profit. Uh, and I think a company like PGS, which is in the services space, which has some unique offerings, which clearly has a track record of success in Western Europe, um, I think has an opportunity to enter the U.S. market, leveraging its experience in Western Europe and leveraging some of the technical innovations that I know you're working on. Uh, so clearly there is that kind of opportunity and it's a question of, of uh, uh, addressing or defining the space that you want to play in, being very hard-nosed and examining your value proposition, understanding how that value proposition competes or has advantages over what other people may be doing in, the, in that sector, uh, and then coming into the United States and uh, we'll try to help you promote it. Okay, great. And my last question, um, do you see any similarities uh, between Poles and Americans. Uh, would it be good for us to cooperate? Absolutely. Let me uh, mention, for example, that uh, a number of large American companies have CEOs of Polish origin. For example, Darius Adamczyk is CEO of Honeywell, one of the largest American industrial enterprises, and also uh, has transformed the company to more of a technology-oriented industrial enterprise from a, a pure industrial company. Uh, Christopher Kamczynski runs McDonald's, he's the CEO of McDonald's. Jacek Olczak has just been named CEO of Philip Morris. Uh, Stephen Ruskowski is the CEO of Quest Diagnostics, which is the biggest laboratory company in the United States. Uh, and Ronald Krushevsky uh, runs a company called Stiefel, which is a big asset manager based in St. Louis. And the president of that company is a guy named James Zemliak. Uh, the admiral who was in charge of Operation Warp Speed Logistics is named James Polovchik. Uh, so I think I, I mentioned these, these highly successful individuals who have succeeded in the United States in a dramatic way uh, because I think their characteristics are similar to Americans. So, highly educated, motivated, hardworking, uh, pragmatic. You know, applied common sense is one of the most important things as you climb the management ladder because you can't be an expert on everything. Uh, so I think all these people demonstrate that. And those are all traits that I think successful American business people have. So I think, uh, you know, the Polish uh, work ethic, reliability, hard work, pragmatism, uh, smarts, brains, good education, uh, solid values for integrity and reliability are all the kinds of things Americans would resonate with. So I think there's every reason to expect and to believe that Polish companies who do their homework uh, and have some great products or offerings to uh, market in the United States uh, can be successful here. And we'll okay, try so to help. Okay, so the only thing we can do is uh, actually to invite uh, American companies to cooperate with uh, Poles and PGS software as well. Um, Absolutely. Perfect. Thank you, Kaz, uh, a lot for this uh, interview. Mm, have a great day and let's talk soon. Thank you. Bye. And best wishes to PGS, which has done some great work in Europe and hopefully will in the United States. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.